Thank you so much for inviting us here to be with you, to share the time with you, to talk about children with autism spectrum disorders or even adults, to talk about different treatments and education, to see this wonderful school, um, the Burge Asalam Ber School and the teachers working so creatively with the students, using data. Thank you, Ms. Enelova, for sharing with us, um, sharing with Baku, sharing with the country, the power of behavior analysis. And also, thank you for this honor of sharing with you one more tactic, one more strategy from the science of behavior that we can use to help learners. So, I'm going to share with you one of the most powerful methods to increase behavior. And we all know, as scientists, as behavior analysts, one of the most powerful tools to increase behavior is reinforcement. We've talked about reinforcement a lot today. And this afternoon, we're going to talk about a very specific method of positive reinforcement to increase appropriate behaviors. It's using an audible marker to pinpoint behavior and improve learning. And it comes out of applied behavior analysis. It comes out of the science of behavior analysis. It is called tag teach. That's a common name, but we can just call it acoustical guidance, or we can call it um, using clickers to train. But often, if you're looking for information on using this procedure with human beings, with people, it's called tag teach. So with tag teach, this very simple yet powerful procedure, parents and teachers and therapists, the folks that actually work directly to change behavior with children, can easily teach many, many different skills. So my goal today, a very simple, humble goal, is to share this evidence-based procedure this extremely effective procedure that's based on behavior analysis that all of us can do, that anyone can do. Tag teach relies on clear communication. And we know that children with autism spectrum disorders often have delays in communication. They may not have language or speech. Their listening comprehension may be, may be difficult. So tag teach tries to remove all of those barriers and provide clear communication using positive reinforcement to build those skills, to build a trusting relationship and increase success. Tag teach is not a new procedure. It's been around. It's been used to teach activities of daily living, hand washing, tooth brushing, cooking, um, all sorts, of, all sorts of skills that we need to function um, in our daily lives. It's been used to teach social skills, initiation, conversation, peer imitation. It's been used to teach communication, language, verbal behavior. It's been used to teach play skills, increasing the variety of play, as Lorenzo has just shared with us, being able to play with different toys, being able to play um, uh, with more diverse interests. Music, it's been used to teach music skills. Dance. Sports skills, all sorts of high sports skills. High jumping. Gymnastics. Even academics or pre-academic skills have been, have been taught using tag teach. In fact, Studying and exam prep, so not just for young kids, but also for adult learners, older children, even surgeons. Tag teach has been used to teach surgeons surgical procedures um, outside of the operating room so that they have reduced errors in that very important environment of the actual surgery. And in fact, there's been a lot of research on tag teach, a lot of publications. Here is the one about using tag teach um, to teach the surgical skills. And here's a screenshot of them. Um, you can see that they have a little clicker to practice tying the surgical knots. So an incredibly powerful 
and diverse, a procedure with diverse applications. So here's a little video, a very simple video of teaching a child the proper placement of paper so when they begin to write, that the paper, the writing can be correct and that the paper is in the correct place. You'll see that he's working for tokens. She has said to him the tag point is paper in lines, and she has a little mark on the table for where the paper should go. So let's see it in action. So she's changed the behavior now. Now that he can put the paper on the lines, he puts his hand on the paper. Okay? Just one very simple example of how tag teach is used. As you can see, tag teach relies on breaking behavior down into small pieces, small, easy to perform pieces that we put back together to build larger and larger complex repertoires, like surgical skills. So not only do we break behavior down into small pieces, we look for those pieces of behavior. We're ever vigilant. We're always observing, looking for those desired behaviors. And as soon as we see them, we immediately reinforce those behaviors. Sometimes they're quick. Sometimes they're fleeting. So we have to be on our game. We have to be good about reinforcing those sometimes fleeting moments of desired behavior. So tag teach actually uses three things to work, three simple things for it to be effective. A clear marker, something to mark the behavior, unique phrasing, just so that we're breaking down those barriers of confusing communication. So just a unique way of identifying the behavior, the desired behavior. Um, that we want. And then, of course, positive reinforcement, because without positive reinforcement, we're not going to get behavior increase, those behaviors that we want. So we do all of this to enhance that teaching, improve our, learn improve our teaching, enhance learning for people of all ages, all abilities. So we said it uses a clear marker. What do we mean by a clear marker? Well, a marker is anything that quickly and clearly communicates that moment of success when the learner has it right. And it can be a clicker, like this. It can be a, a clap, or a tap, or a snap. For learners that do not hear, it can be a visual signal, or a flashlight. It can be tactile. It can even sometimes be a vocal tag, like good. But there, we'll talk about vocal tags um, in a second. So we do have clicker. So first off, actually, I want to ask, how many, um, how many people here with us today are parents? Parents of, of children with special needs or without a. So um, we want to make sure if the parents can keep their hands up, because I brought 200 clickers. So my colleagues are going to share with everyone um, some clickers. And we want to make sure, for sure, that parents get one. So um, and I know you will not, we are all children at heart, so as soon as you get it, you can click. That's OK. That's fine, because we all want to. But we want to make sure that we have clickers for every parent, and then we will distribute the rest. OK? And I apologize, I don't have one for everyone. But hopefully, enough to share. <laughs> I know. Go ahead. Get it out of your system. You. You're welcome. <laughs> so 
So we'll make sure we get the parents, and then the, my colleagues will pass out the rest. <laughs> I knew that uh, <laughs> I knew that there would be a lot of clicking. You have yours. Okay, I think we have almost all the parents. Correct. If you uh, if you're a parent and still don't have one, keep your hand up. Um, just another minute of clicks to get it out of your system, and then we will go on with the, with the presentation. And my colleagues will just try to distribute the rest of them. OK, so if I may ask you to indulge me and stop the clicking, please. You can stop the clicking. I knew this would be um, chancy. So if we could stop the clicking. How do we say, um, please stop? <laughs> so we will stop. Davam etmek için zehmet olmasa, clickerleri biraz sonra istifade ederiz. Teşekkürler. Thank you. I promise you will get a chance some more. I promise. I promise. I won't give you such a tool and then deprive you. So, a click. So we're not clicking right now, but I will ask you to click soon. But basically, all that marker, and remember, it can be a clap, a tap, the flash, a light. A marker can be anything as long as it's consistent. And it means, that sound means, you did it. To the learner, it means that was it. Good job. You got it. That is the function of the click, to immediately mark that behavior. You got it. You did it. I'm proud of you. OK? A click, even though the click signals good job, when we're teaching clicker training, when we are starting, it's also followed by a known reinforcer. So it's not just the click. We need to back it up, follow it with a reinforcer. No click, an absence of click means not quite right. Maybe try again. It's not you're wrong or any, any type of aversive. It just means that, that wasn't it. But you get a chance to try again. And no click, no reinforcer following it. So we are going to practice. So you will get to click. And if you don't have a clicker, go ahead and clap, right? So that you get to participate. So I'm going to show a video of a tennis, a tennis match. And you're going to click every time this player in the neon shirt hits the ball. So your tag point is when his, when his racket touches the ball, OK? The tag point is hit ball. So as soon as this player, not the other player, um, as soon as his racket hits the ball, you're going to click. The whole purpose of this is to practice your timing. The purpose is to practice that timing, because you want it immediate on the behavior. Ready? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. The neon. Neon, good, 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 good clapping too. <laughs> Just when the neon player hits. Just when the man in back. Good, good, ah, getting good, getting really good. Much better. Good. Just a couple more. OK. Good. This is why I had you practice your timing. It's not always that easy. You want to catch that behavior right when it happens, right? And so that is, um, 
That was why I had you practice, because we want to catch the, the desired behavior the moment it happens. So I said tag, point, tag teaching uses three things, the marker, the unique phrasing. Like I said, tag point is hit ball, or the tag point is touch nose, or the tag point is sit down. Just a clear description of what the behavior is. And a behavior, we all know, is an observable activity. A behavior, often something we do, but it's an observable activity, like standing, or what I keep doing, walking, or singing, or writing, or swallowing. All of those are behaviors. So I'm going to ask you, if something is a behavior, we're going to use another ABA tactic, another tactic from behavior analysis, called choral responding. And when I snap, I want you to verbally, vocally say yes, which is belly, correct, right? Or no, which is yolks. Yo. Yo. Okay. So um, whether or not it's a behavior, but don't say it until don't say you will say yes or no when I signal. Okay? You have to wait for the signal. Here's the first thing. Is this a behavior? Hand raising. Wait. <laughs> so we're going to vocally say, say out loud, yes or no. So hand raising. Yes or no, belly, vox. Hand raising. <laughs> belly, good. On signal. Get ready. Hand raising. Excellent. It is a behavior. Smiling. Get, re get ready. Get ready. Belly. Belly. Good, most of you on signal. Belly. Right. Hand raise, I mean, smiling is a behavior. I'm very simply asking you whether or not something is a behavior. Something, an observable activity. Smiling is yes. Here's another one. You ready? Happy. Is happy a behavior? OK, well, good, but wait for the signal. Get ready. No. no. Fox or no. Um, <laughs> happy is a description of maybe multiple behaviors, like smiling, laughing, leaning in, jumping up for joy. Happy is a description of, of a collection of other things. It's a des description of a condition but it's not necessarily a behavior. If we wanted to shape happy, we might shape smiling or, or laughing or making eye contact um, while smiling, things like that, the behaviors. Here's another one, putting your hand down. Is that a behavior? Get ready. Yes, thank you. Putting your hand down is a behavior. Here's another one. Stubborn, is that a behavior? No. No, exactly. Not a behavior. Again, another label. Tired. Is that a behavior? No. no. Good. Now, um, uh, we've gone, we're going through this because we want, when you're using tag teach, you want to reinforce behaviors and not these other things. So you have to be clear about what the behavior is. Last one. Turns the page. Turns page. Is that a behavior? Yes, thank you. Can I get everyone together again? We're going to say either in English, yes, or belly, but turns page. Yes. Thank you. Yes, good. All right. So we talked about all of these as behaviors, hand raising, smiling, putting your hand down, turning the page. They're observable moments that we could tag, that we could reinforce. So tag teach uses, like we said, that acoustical marker, which you have, that unique phrasing, that tag point, the actual behavior, like turns page, and positive reinforcement. So we've explained the marker. We've explained unique phrasing. So what do we mean by positive reinforcement? We talked about it all day. It's incredibly important. It's incredibly powerful. And one of the most important things about whether or not something is a reinforcer or reinforcement, it's determined by the child. Every one of us has our own set of reinforcers. And we cannot tell our children, our learners, what their reinforcers are. 
They tell us. They tell us by their behavior, by the things they engage in. Lorenzo gave wonderful examples of children selecting reinforcers based on their activity. They can be edible, visual, activities, music, so um, auditory, anything. But the important point is the child, the learner, tells us what the reinforcer is. So um, when you click, if you start to tag teach a lot, sometimes the click even serves as um, a positive re a reinforcer, a positive sound. But just remember, when you're starting tag teaching, when you're starting click, do not rely on the click alone. You have to deliver another reinforcer determined by the child. OK? Good. All right. Now, how to do this? It's, everything is in threes in my presentation. We're going to do this in three easy steps. You're going to remember this. A triangle has three sides. Um, I tried to find the Azerbaijani words. I hope that they are correct. But the three easy steps are identify, tag, and reinforce. So identify, is that the correct word for identify? Good. Google does not have a word for tag <laughs> or mark. So we will just use tag and then reinforce. Those are the three easy steps. Identify the behavior, mark it, tag it, reinforce it. Okay. So under identifying, um, what you identify is the, that behavior that you want. It's called your tag point. The behavior is what you want. And it should only be one behavior. So it's not, when you're teaching individual behaviors, you're going to tag, and you want to teach eating, it may be lifting spoon. That one behavior is first reinforced. And then you might reinforce open mouth. But you're focusing always on one behavior at first. And because it's behavior, it's observable. We can see it. So therefore, we can um, click. And when you have your tag point, when you identify it, you want it to be brief, just a few words, five words or less. So again, yes or no, or belly or um, yox, for whether or not this is a tag point. And just to go back, which I don't know how to do, um, remember, it has to be observable, brief, um, one behavior, Five words or less, OK? So is this a tag point? Pick up pencil. Is it observable, brief, one behavior, and less than five words? Whoop. Oh, you went back for me. Thank you. Thank you. Good. And now we can go back again. I'll do that. Thank you. So is this a um, tag point? Pick pencil up, yes or no. Get ready. Yes, because. It's observable. You can see it. It's one behavior, picking up the pencil. It's brief, the word, um, and it's five words or less. So therefore, yes, it could, be a, it could be a tag point. Here's another one. Pencil touch paper. Having your pencil touch the paper. Pencil touch paper. Is that a tag point? Get ready. Yes, excellent. It is a tag point. Again, observable, five words or less. Get ready to write. So think, think, think. Get ready to write. Okay? Could, is that a good tag point? Yes or no? No. Good. And I know some folks might, might have been unsure. It's not a good tag point. I would ask you why, but. Um, I think all of you can think, it, why is it not a good tag point? Because what does it mean to get ready? Does it mean to put the paper in the right place? Does it mean to look at the paper? Does it mean to sit down at the, at the desk? We don't know what the behavior is, so it is not a good tag point. Here's another one. Think about what you'll write. Is that a good tag point? No, good, it's not. You guys are wonderful. Because, again, it's not observable in terms of think. Right now, I could be thinking. 
or I could be thinking about what I'm going to write, or I could be thinking about what we're going to have for dinner this evening. I could be um, thinking about other things. So again, it's not, um, it's not a clear description of a behavior. Look at paper. Is that a good tag point? Look at paper. Get, get ready? Look at paper. Yes, it is. Again, fewer than five words, observable, single behavior, all right? So, um, this, I don't know why it's doing this, sorry. So again, these are good tag points, and the ones that are crossed out are not, because it may not be observable, it may not be um, only one behavior. Okay, so this is what you want in your tag point. So, here's the context, eating having our kids eat. And all of our children probably are at different abilities and different preferences and different idiosyncrasies with regard to eating. But in the context, we want our children to eat meals to be healthy and strong. Our objective is we want our child to eat a complete meal. The instructions might start with time to eat, and then we would tell them the tag point is. But eating is a complex behavior. There are a lot of skills involved. So maybe our tag point is look at spoon. If we have a, a, a child that is not eating at all, not a, has food uh, um, aversions, avoids foods, um, maybe we just start with look at spoon. So we say the tag point is look at spoon. And every time they look at spoon, we click. Or maybe we have a learner, a child, that um, we want them to be able to put the spoon in their mouth. So that would be the tag point. Or maybe it's swallow three bites. Or maybe it's wiping their mouth with a napkin. Or ultimately, maybe, the tag point is eat the complete meal, which we would, of course, define as, as, the, as a clean plate. So the point is, we can teach any range of behaviors so when we say one tag point, it doesn't mean we only teach one thing out of a repertoire, but it does mean we focus on one thing at a time, and then we build that repertoire. Okay? Right? Okay. So your ta the tag point for the learner is always determined by their current level. If we don't have success in open mouth, we're going to back down to an earlier behavior, maybe picking up the spoon, maybe bringing the spoon close to the mouth. Um, it's always determined by their level of success, and it's going to change as they change, as they learn and grow. Your tag points are going to change to match that. But just remember, one goal at a time, and sometimes we have to shape. Shaping is another wonderful tactic and technology from behavior analysis. Um, something else to look into. So number one was identify. Number two is tag. So the reason that we use a clicker, go ahead and click. The reason we use a clicker, yep. Good. <laughs> because it's brief. It's, a, it's not me saying, that was really an excellent job. You did a really a wonderful thing. That's, that's long. The, the tag is brief. It's either a click or no click, so it's binary. It either means yes, good job, you did it, or no, try again. When you start to use it, it acquires meaning. The learner knows when they hear that click, they've done the right thing, so it's meaningful. Um, and it's positive, because the click always means yes. So it basically provides this clear, immediate feedback to the learner. And don't we all love clear, immediate feedback? Nothing confusing about it. You know if and exactly when you did the right thing, when you were successful. So that's the tag, the second part. Okay, so we're going to practice. I'm going to be your learner. And again, if you don't have a clicker, you can clap. The tag point is waving. So I'm going to engage in behavior, and you're going to click when I wave. And the wave is one hand above shoulder, so above shoulder, yes, no. Yes, no, right? So one hand above shoulder, 
Palm outward, yes, no, right? Fingers extended, so yes, no. And moving your hand from side to side. So that's our definition of waving, right? So here I am. I am a child learning, starting to learn to wave at family and peers. Um, you're going to click when I exhibit the target behavior, the tag point, waving. Ready? Good. Most of you didn't click. Too low, right? Not the right behavior. No. Good, some of you. This is not moving hands side to side from the wrist, right? That's what we said, waving. I just did this. So we're trying to shape the behavior that we want. So here we go. Good. You don't want your kids waving like this. They look like they're fanning themselves. Is that right? Good, we didn't say which, right? No. Yeah, so we all have to observe. We have to watch behavior, capture the behavior we want. And then we feel really good when we get it, because then, good. Thank you, you have just taught me to wave. Good, just by shaping, by capturing, excuse me, the behavior when I needed it. We need to capture behavior so we can shape or we can catch them being good. There is a father in, in the UK who uses um, tag teaching with his young daughter with autism. Who, she never made eye contact. And he started any time that she, she just looked in his general direction, she would click. And then it shaped to holding her head there. And then it shaped to eye contact. And so he was just capturing the behavior. He didn't turn her head. He didn't try to explain what eye contact was. He just caught, caught that moment when it happened. So, wait, so one method is to wait for the child to perform the behavior and capture it. Another method is to set up the environment for it to occur. And again, Lorenzo did a wonderful job talking about how you set up the environment. We can do that. We can, um, if we want to start to shape sitting down, we set up the environment where there's a chair, and maybe after the child's done a lot of walking, the chair is there, and they sit down and we click. So we can set up the environment for the behavior that we want. And once we tag it, once we reinforce it, it's likely to happen again. Sometimes it may take a lot. Many, many, many tags, many, many, many reinforcers. But it will get there. So a clicker vastly increases the number of great jobs a child may hear. It makes their environment very rich with regard to positive reinforcement. And a clicker never yells or gets frustrated. And we as clicker, as tag teachers, as people using this, this procedure, we don't need to get um, yelling, we don't need to get frustrated or upset. If we're not getting the behavior, maybe we look at that, that scale and we back down a little bit and we look for what we're getting and capture that and then build it back up. So a clicker helps overcome sensory overload, auditory processing issues, language barriers, confusion, and it lets children learn at their own pace. Okay? We're not forcing behavior. We're capturing behavior. Three parts we said, identify, tag, reinforce. Remember, like we said earlier, reinforcers are personal. The learner tells you what their reinforcers are. But we need to be observant enough and, and, um, and, and connected to our learners and our children enough to know what their reinforcers are. So when you, we talk about charging the clicker, at first a clicker and that sound is going to be meaningless. So at the very beginning, you click, you give the reinforcer. Whether, whether it's um, a lollipop, whether it's um, 10 seconds of music, whether it's the chance to spin a toy, whatever it may be. Click, reinforce, click, reinforce, click, reinforce. Pair that clicker with the reinforcer. Pair, pair that sound with the reinforcer. The other thing that's a little confusing is a click is a contract. If you click, you need to reinforce, even if you didn't mean to click, because you can't break the contract. Right? But then the clicker loses its power. That marker loses its power. So you always have to click and reinforce. 
And again, as behavior gets stronger, as repertoires get more um, varied, we can begin to fade the clicker or fade the reinforcer. So the click, again, is not, that sound is not the reinforcer, especially in the beginning. It just tags the behavior. So um, I mentioned this gentleman, um, Sean Pogson, that's in the UK. Um, he has a Twitter account where he posts a lot of his um, work with his daughter, Tink, who has autism. So here's just some of his posts. So he reinforced, or he basically tag taught, clicked, every time she started to mark with a sponge. So he shaped that behavior. He also got her used to a dentist procedure, dentist prep. So his first behavior is that if he put his hand out, she put her chin on his hand and then opened her mouth and then was able to accept the mirror. So here's a dad getting his daughter used to ready for the dental, for dental procedures. Um, same thing, blood tests, getting her used to first having a tourniquet, then um, having something pressed on her arm. So again, shaping all through this tag teaching methodology. Continuing to do his blood, prepping for blood, blood test, and then all that paid off. A few weeks of this prepping, and she aced her actual medical visit. Okay. So here is another example, a post of his. His daughter um, did not have, does not have a very strong core. She needs strengthening um, to, sit, uh, to sit up and to do other things. And so here's a video of how he taught her And you can listen. There's the reinforcer, the music. And the tag is reach and touch. And again, she has to keep that strong core to do the behavior. Okay. Okay. Um, so as Sean says, no hocus pocus, no magic, um, no, no, no um, difficulties or frustration. She's smiling. She has um, good emotion, a good connection, trust. She wants to participate. And all of that is due to the contingencies, those highly reinforcing contingencies that he um, brought in with, with uh, tag teaching. So tag teaching, um, like anything else in behavior analysis, I didn't show you um, many examples of measurement, but you, we should always measure the behaviors that we're teaching. What is, how frequent do they occur? What might the duration be? As we measure, we need to do an analysis of that, we may have to shape behavior, tag teaching, you might have to think about your schedules of reinforcement, and many, many, many other things. We just covered the basics, just a few simple things that you can use with your learners, with your children. But just remember, it's part of a bigger, complex system, and all of that involves measurement. So tag teaching, teaching with acoustical guidance, does work. From this International Encyclopedia of Education, why does tag teaching work? Because it's based on reinforcement, positive reinforcement. So research has shown that the most effective way to reduce problem behavior in children and to strengthen desirable hit behavior is through positive reinforcement, rather than trying to weaken undesirable behavior. It's better to reinforce the things that we want, to catch them being good and strengthen that rather than using type, other types of negative procedures. There's a lot of research around tag teach. There are several peer-reviewed published studies. There are several books written on, on the procedures, many, many presentations, many, many, many videos on YouTube, lots of free resources on the internet regarding tag teach. Tag teaching ultimately is about clearly communicating with your child. It's about having that trust and having that communication so you can build new behaviors. With tag teaching, you have a very simple and inexpensive way to build good behavior, to mark and build good behavior. 
when people ask you about tag teaching, you can just say, I'm using positive reinforcement with an event marker to teach my child a new skill. That's, that is, in a nutshell, that's what you were doing. You're using positive reinforcement and that event marker to build these new skills. There are several resources, as I said. Um, a book written by a mother of a child with autism is called Chaos to Calm. And I just wanted to show you the table of contents because these are all the behaviors that she taught her severely, um, her child with um, very severe deficits and needs. Um, all of these things that she taught through Tag Teach. Going for a walk, going into the community, um, other types of life skills. So as I said, there are lots of resources. Um, one of the founders of Tag Teach is Teresa uh, McCohen. She has this book about Don't Nag, Tag. So the information is there. Martha Gabler's book, and then The Mom of a Child with Autism, and then um, Sean Pogson, The Father of a Child with Autism. So where you can get more resources. So ultimately, I hope I met my goal of sharing a simple procedure for you to use to work with parents. Coxagol, no, Coxagol. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you. Sorry. Good, good, good. Thank you. And um, if we can keep this up, back up. The URL at the top, all of the slides will be on the URL when it comes back up. They're, they are not there now, but um, in a week, they'll be there. Give me a week, and all the slides will be posted. Can we get that slide back up? The last slide? And if you can try to do that while I do questions, if we, ha if we have questions. We have questions for you. Oh. First of all, thank you for this wonderful presentation. Oh, this was very welcome. interesting. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, first one is in English. Oh, good. And then we will continue. Uh, so, is it better to use candies or Bravo and good job? Is it better to use candies or Bravo or, and good job? Yeah. What do you think my answer is going to be? Based on everything that we've said. It's be exactly. It's better to use what works for the child, right? And so sometimes you might have to start out with candy because that your child may have limited reinforcers in the beginning. And before you're able to broaden those reinforcers to other types of activities or more healthy foods or verbal praise. But it's always determined by the child. And ultimately, we want to get the child to the natural reinforcers that happen in the environment that, that are shared among all of us as, as human beings. Yes. Acoustic marker then. Birden çok şagird olan sinifte istifade etmek mümkün olar mı? Bu halde sesler birbirine karışabilir. Bunu, uh, bunun karşısını nece alabilirim? <gülüyor> Believe it or not, yes, you can use, and it will be a cacophony, it will be noisy, but it's the sound of learning, it's the sound of success. But yes, you can use multiple markers because if you're working with a child and you're reinforcing that behavior, they know that click is for them, even though there might be some other clicks happening over there. So yes, you can use in a classroom multiple markers and they do it in gymnastics all the time or all sorts of other contexts. And you, the, but it's a wonderful sound of learning. Yeah. The next question is, how we can use tech click with uh, kids in schools uh, without autism? The same way, I the suppose. The same <laughs> way. No difference. That's the beauty of a science. The procedures are universal, right? So it's the same with, with children with special needs as without, as with the surgeons. But it's up to you to identify the skill, right? Identify a clear observable behavior. So with your academic kids in typical classroom, well, not academic, um, but whatever behavior, 
identify the behavior, be able to label it, tag it, and then reinforce it. It's the same. Если ребенок с аутизмом не любит по утрам умываться, как сделать так, чтобы для него это было приятным действием, и он хотел это Maybe it's turning the handle. Maybe it's getting your hand wet. You build the behavior. You always start where the learner is, where they're going to be successful, and then you build. The next question is, are you uh, using, uh, do you have an Instagram? People want to follow you. Uh, I, <laughs> I think you can share this information <laughs> with us, too. I apologize. I do not have. Instagram or Facebook. Um, even though I work in digital technologies as part of my profession, um, I am not on any social media. But you absolutely on that slide, if we can get that slide, slide up again. Is bir daha da. That ekranı. one? If you go there, when I post the slides, you can reach me there as well. Okay? And I would welcome hearing from you. And I want to hear about your success. Ве, не бе салмус. Где можно приобрести кликер? Um, the internet. <laughs> um, so in, in Azerbaijan, I, I, I really don't know. Um, but if you Google clicker, many, many places come up. So there may be shopping. I got mine um, on Amazon. I got the ones that I brought on Amazon. But again, you don't need that clicker. It can be, it can be a pen, you know, a pen, a, a writing pen. It can be anything. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.